All right. This is uh, the second in my videos on Hermit interpolation, cubic Hermit interpolation. Let's see if the light works a little better over here. This is an example. It's a historical example. I spent some time looking over the details of Aryabhata's sign table, and I learned some really interesting things. So Aryabhata was an Indian mathematician who was active about uh, 500 in common era. So he was apparently 23 years old in 500. And around this time, he made major contributions to astronomy, uh, geometry, mathematics in general. He could solve quadratic equations, invented some continued fractions. Uh, really a very remarkable person. One of the things that he did was he created a, a table of the values of the sine function, although he didn't call it that. Uh, and it was accurate to four places. If you consult the Wikipedia entry on Aryabhata's sine table, you'll find how uh, he really did it. But I've translated it into modern terms so that we can um, investigate cubic Hermite interpolation as an example. So what he had done was he had tabulated 24 values of essentially the sine function. And I've graphed those 24 values. I've actually added zero. He didn't bother to tabulate zero. Nobody needed to know that the sine of zero was zero. But we have all of these values of the sine function. Now he continued on as the sine function, but I'm folding it over as the cosine function because of course uh, the sine of uh, theta is the cosine of 90 minus theta. So recording uh, the cosine of these uh, sine values is equivalent to recording the, the sine values. The, the angles go from 0 up to pi over 4, and his table went all the way up to pi over 2. Of course, he used different units, and he didn't use the numerals. In fact, he encoded the table as a, uh, uh, in letters or words in Sanskrit. So it didn't look like this. Um, anyway, so I have written down four-digit numbers. Aryabhata's table was accurate to four digits, and one of the places he was off by one decimal digit in the, in the last part, but I don't know whether that's a transcription error or what, the, what that was. Anyway, these are four-digit values of the sine of the angles of pi over 48 radians, pi over 24 radians, pi over 16 radians, pi over 12 radians, uh, 5 pi over 48 radians, etc. Well, that's a silly way to uh, think about angles, but anyway, there we go. And we can see that the gap between each of these is pi over 48. In degrees, that's th 3 degrees in 45 seconds. So we're going to work in radians because we're going to be doing cubic Hermite interpolation and we need derivatives. And if you need derivatives of sine, then you know that you should work in radians because otherwise the derivative of sine x is not cos x, but cos x times some crazy factor that you need to account for the change in units. So we saw in the other video that with four functions, uh, g00 of theta, uh, which is 2 theta plus 1 times theta minus 1 squared, and g01 of theta, which is theta times theta minus 1 squared, and these other two, we could pick out the values of the function at one end and the derivative at one end and the function at the other end and the derivative at the other end. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to interpolate uh, across this interval from pi over 12 to 5 pi over 8. So I'm only going to do one piece of a piecewise cubic Hermite interpolation. And it's going to be a true cubic Hermite interpolant. I'm going to use the function value and the actual true underlying derivative. And I'm going to use the function value and the actual true underlying derivative at that point to give me a cubic polynomial across this interval. And so we look, we choose the interval based on what we want to compute. And for some reason, I decided that I wanted to compute sine of 0 0.3. So I look in the table and uh, 0.3 occurs between 0.2618 and 0.3272. So this is the interval that I'm going to be working on between pi over 12 and pi over 5 pi over 48. And so it's this function value and its derivative value and this function value and its derivative value that I need, which I've got in the table here. 
So our formula from the last time said that uh, sine of x was going to be the value of the function times g0,0 of theta, where theta was x minus the left endpoint divided by the width uh, uh, h, so that's a non-dimensional representation of how far along in this interval we are. Uh, so 0.2588, that's the first function value, that's the sine of uh, at the left end, uh, 0.2588. Uh, plus h times the derivative at that value, that's 0.9659, times g01, so that's this one. So those those two go in together that way. Then we have 0.314 times g10, which is 3 minus 2 theta theta squared, so that's this value, plus h times 0.9469 times this value. And I wrote small programs for my little calculator uh, and plugged in the numbers and you wind up getting uh, four digits correct for the sine of 0.3 radians. It's um, 0.2994 is what you, what you get. <coughs> Which is great. The, the values of the uh, functions are given to four decimal places and we've recovered essentially the same accuracy in there. Now, one of the interesting things about the sine function is that it's pretty linear in the early stages. So if I draw drop a ruler on top of this, you can just see that it's, that it's still really, really close to linear. It's not quite. You can see the curve as it goes, but it's kind of a, kind of a very delicate curve. Sine theta really is very like theta, especially for small angles. So we might think we could just use linear interpolation from here to here. And in fact, linear interpolation is enough to get four digits of accuracy. All of this extra uh, computation is kind of wasted for the sine function on here if we only want four decimal digits. Uh, the thing that I learned when uh, perusing the Wikipedia entry on Aryabhata was in fact that uh, Madhava had 800 years later seriously improved the sign tables in, in, in essence by inventing Taylor series uh, about 300 years before Gregory or Newton. So these are really uh, uh, very seriously advanced mathematics and he uh, managed to get the tabulated values of the sign table not to four places but to uh, seven or eight places. And if we use Madhava's uh, 14th century values for the table instead, so instead of the four decimal 0.2588 we use the seven decimal Madhava value, etc. for these things, then in fact using exactly these functions and working to eight decimal digits, we actually get the correct value of sine of 0.3 to uh, 10 to the minus eight. So the cubic Hermite interpolation can take accurate values in this particular case, and the the error that we get is about 10 to the minus 8. Now, if we improve the accuracy to 10 to the minus 12 on the theta data, Hermite interpolation will never get better than about 10 to the minus 8 uh, uh, on here. It's just the cubic polynomial is not the sine function between those two things, but it's pretty good. So there's the example of true cubic Hermite interpolation that I wanted to talk about. Um, it has some historical interest and I urge you to have a look at the Wikipedia entry on Aryabhata and Madhava. I'm going to talk a little bit about, in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the error and I'm going to talk about what happens when we don't use the exact derivatives of the underlying function but we rather use something else. But before I finish, I want to point out that, of course, there are different cubics in each piece, and this is a piecewise polynomial interpolant, and we don't have the problem of oscillations at the endpoints of the, of the interval. And just so you know, the roadrunner was carved by my father. So there we go.